G'day everyone, so on today's video, I'm gonna be installing and testing the cheapest aluminum intercooler that you can buy for the Ford Ranger on eBay. I paid a total of $305 for this intercooler off eBay. It was the cheapest one on there. There was a number of them advertised around that same price, but with a promo code, I got it down to $305. Let's do an official unboxing and see what exactly I paid for. Pretty well packaged. At a first glance, it actually looks pretty good. Um, the welds seem pretty well done. Uh, it looks like it's using a bar and plate core, which is seems to be relatively good. Just looking all the way around. Quite impressed of um, the quality here. It seems to be all pretty good. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go out and do a bit of testing with my standard intercooler, do a couple of runs up a hill, checking EGTs on the factory intercooler. I'm then going to install this aftermarket intercooler, go for a run on the same section of road and see exactly how much of an improvement we've seen. Just coming up to the uphill section now. I'm sitting on about 100 k's per hour. Ambient temperature is still 29 degrees C. So I'm going to try and maintain that 100 k's per hour as I come up this uphill section. As you can see, we hit about 370 that time. So if you're removing this grill, one thing just to remember is these clips down the bottom, you just push them down to unlatch it from the bumper because these are pretty easy to snap. As you can see, I ripped my front bumper off, just made it heaps more easier. Previously, when I did the intercooler on my other Ranger, it had a bull bar on, so I didn't have to remove the bull bar or anything like that, but on this one, I took the front bar off. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Obviously, the aftermarket one being a fair bit bigger, and also, if we look at it from this angle, it is quite thicker than the standard one. Probably double the thickness, I would say. If you are planning on buying this intercooler, just make sure you have a 10 mil bolt for the air intake sensor as the factory one in the plastic intercooler won't work. So I've had one on hand and um, just gonna use that. Also, you'll need to reuse your factory rubbers. So easiest thing is just pull the center of them out and slide them on. And then that pretty much just goes back in there. Got all the rubbers and the intake air sensor all transferred on. This intercooler is now ready to throw in. Intercooler is now all bolted up and on. I must say, uh, if, you go, if you plan to buy this intercooler and fit it, this pipe here went on pretty easily. Um, you probably can't see down there. But um, yeah, this one is easy. It's an aftermarket SAS intercooler pipe, so it was pretty easy. But this one here was a bit of a struggle to get on. Uh, that's the factory original Ford one. 
whoops and um, it was pretty tight getting it on I don't know if the um, this intercooler is slightly bigger with the diameter of the inlet than the factory intercooler but with a bit of silicon spray I managed to get it on and I had to use one of my own hose clamps instead of the factory Ford hose clamp but besides that everything fits up really really good now time to get the rest of it all on one other thing I forgot to mention is the side ducting you will have to trim a bit out the side because obviously now with this intercooler being a lot thicker when you go to put it on which is like that as you can see it doesn't want to go on so I'm gonna to have to trim that out with a grinder and then that should fit pretty snugly in there as you can see that's all trimmed back now and basically just got to do the same for the other side now both sides of the ducting now on and this is pretty much all the modifying you'll have to do to get it on everything else will be straight back bolted on one other modification that I'm doing to fit this intercooler is taking about 10 mil off the bumper right there because it's just hitting on that when I go to put the bumper on. That's on both sides too. Everything is now back together again. All I've got to do is just chuck the grill on and that little top plastic bit. And I'm going to go take it for a test drive. But yeah, pretty happy how the way it sits in there. Everything looks pretty OEM and factory and inconspicuous, which is good. About to start climbing on the uphill. starting to go down so I think the highest we seen there was about 340 so that's actually pretty good from what I can see there it's actually reduced our exhaust gas temps by about 20 degrees I'll have to check the footage over again and uh, find out exactly but from memory that's what it's roughly looking at so these are my final thoughts in regards to the intercooler upgrade I was just going back over the footage and all up we see a 30 degree drop in exhaust gas temps over the factory setup. In saying that, that's a wrap up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next one.